Hi there. Welcome to Cappadocia. This is Garame, the uh, main tourist town, not the largest town in the region. There are other places that you can stay, like Uchisar, but Garame here kind of has the most happening scene. Amazing restaurant selection. This is a really nice one right here. Dibek, kind of uh, down in the uh, bottom of that building, but with really comfy sit-down uh, tables. And then here we have Kale Terrasa and Pasha restaurant is good and has really good beer. Tons and tons of restaurants, hotels, like the one that uh, I showed there, mine, just a 10 minute walk away. You can even stay in the actual ancient caves that have been turned into hotel rooms. I did that the first time that I came to Cappadocia way back in 2009. This is my fourth time here. I've spent more than a month exploring all throughout this region and there is much, much more to see. It is an absolutely fascinating, mysterious, endlessly interesting place, especially for adventurous travelers. So, the mission for today is to basically drive around the area right around Garame here and show some of the sites and also try to find two things that I was trying to find in the last video when I was exploring out there. Also, I am intrigued by those fairy chimneys, all of these uh, things sticking up out of the uh, ground, the natural rock formations are called fairy chimneys, and there are some there that I don't think that I have uh, been up to before. I can see the whole door or window or whatever that is. And so uh, Garame is a small town of just 2,000, and then you can walk in any direction and find all kinds of absolutely fascinating things to explore just walking out of here, including the Open Air Museum, which is where some of the most spectacular of the carved out caves are, along with incredibly gorgeous, colorful Christian murals painted by Byzantine Greek monks centuries ago. That is just a uh, short walk or short drive that way. So anyways, I'm going to uh, get back to my hotel, hop in the uh, rental car, and let's go see more of incredible Cappadocia. So about $235 US for the rental car for a week. So that is about uh, 33 bucks a day. Great deal. That is including the full insurance. As for getting to Cappadocia, then of course you could rent a car and drive across Turkey, but uh, most likely you will want to fly in, in which case the closest international airport is Kayseri, about an hour away. I flew from Istanbul to Kayseri direct for uh, just uh, $63 total. And then I rented the car there at the airport and it's an hour drive out here to Garame in the center of Cappadocia. Okay, those are some uh, pretty cool looking ones there. They have wooden frames on them, but looks like they are locked off. Unless this happens to be open, but I doubt it. Just thought that I would poke around here a little bit before getting going out of town. Really cool one, just all inside that uh, fairy chimney. Multiple rooms, another like window up there, and so would there be a yeah, stairwell going up there, or else an entrance from the back side. Let's see if we can get closer to one of these somehow. There's various fences and whatnot in the way. Mm -hmm. 
So, here's something kind of interesting. An abandoned, it appears, resort. This uh, gate was wide open like that. So most of these uh, ferry chimneys back in here seem to be blocked off by uh, private property. So let's keep cruising and go find more of the fascinating caves and landscapes and everything there is to see here in Cappadocia. I'm now going to uh, head over to the Garme Open Air Museum where there are the incredible very chimneys with the caves and the colorful paintings, depictions of the uh, life of Jesus and images from the Bible painted by Byzantine Greek monks centuries ago. And over there, I'm going to try to find the big cave that I was unable to find a couple of days ago. Saw the sign, the churches are always interesting. I parked over there and then looked on Google and it is 700 meters. I could probably drive up there, it's up this road, but a 10 minute walk. So the big cave that I'm hoping to find is something that was alerted to me by a viewer who sent me a little video on Instagram and explained that it was between the Garame Open Air Museum and Garame there, which is just like a two kilometer distance. I was here two days ago trying to find it with no luck. And so far, I still don't see anything that looks like uh, the cave based on the video. So let's see if we can get uh, lucky this time because it looked really unique, a different style and much larger than a lot of the other caves. Looks like I'm going the right way. El Nazar Kilisesi is church in Turkish. So today is September 8th, and it is really the perfect time to be here, going into fall or else in spring when it is cooler. Winters are pretty cold. Summers are very hot. As far as getting around Cappadocia, then of course having a rental car is the easiest way to go. But if you can't afford it or just don't want one for whatever reason, then you can still see a lot by either just hiking out of Garame here or wherever you stay, Uchisar. There's so much you can see just by going for a walk. But also there are tours you can take. You could, of course, like catch a taxi to certain places if you wanted. But uh, definitely a rental car is the best way to go. Looks like that must be the church. Steps going up to it. And a tour bus. Church open. And nobody around. It doesn't look very open. Oh, that's going to be a shame. Yeah, it looks very, very close. That is too bad. I bet there are... Very nice murals inside. Strange, it is middle of the afternoon, a Thursday. Interesting. Ticket office. Merhaba. Merhaba. It's possible? Yes. Oh, great. You, you open it? Yeah, uh, I'm coming. Amazing. How much for ticket? 20 lira. Okay, great. And when was it carved? Hmm? Carving in 10th century yeah. also? 11th century. 11th century. 11th century. I see.
So that is the cave church. 20 Turkish lira is just one dollar, so very affordable. And I'm now inside one of the free caves, as is the case with most of them scattered all throughout the region. You can just go hiking and find cave after cave after cave that is outside of the pay area and free to go inside. So here you have the pigeon roosts. So this kind of looks like it might have just been basically a pigeon coop for uh, harvesting the guano from uh, the pigeons. Now I'm going to attempt to hike over to the open air museum going a different way from how I got here over there. Let's see if there is a trail that goes up and over this here and then down the other side. Oh boy, this uh, might be tricky. Let's try to figure it out. Well, I managed to get up here, right there. Not especially easy. And there's Uchisar, incredible view of it. So, the question is, is there going to be somewhere where I can get back down? Because there aren't really trails here, like sort of right here, but uh, definitely not an established hiking path. Probably there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So that path was actually pretty decent. And look at this. We have steps right there and a truck. But which way did it come from? Looks like the road is going back that way. I need to get down this way. Sounds like construction going on. Yep, wow, what are they creating? A road, I guess. Whoa, wasn't expecting to find this up here. I guess there must be a way to get down. So I just need to get down onto the road that they are building there. Then it's going to be kind of a uh, messy walk through sand or dusty dirt there and then easy to get down and my car is parked right there. A fairly spacious one here without the pigeon roosts. This looks like it could be a dining hall for the monks. You have a bench there where they could sit and then sort of a table. And looks like we have another church here. Or maybe not. Maybe a living space. there is definitely something special about these two caves because of the more ornate entrance must be related to the monks whether it's a church or something else maybe the head monk's home or something where you have a fireplace clearly because of the blackened soot
So, I'm wondering if perhaps one of those two big rocks on top of the ridge there could be the large cave that I'm trying to find. Let's go find out. So there is a sign for the parking fees there. A car is 15 Turkish lira. There is currently 18 lira to one US dollar. So it is less than one dollar to park your car here. I'm waiting for some juice, a mix of orange and pomegranate. And you can see some prices there. Hamburger, chips, and a cola for 99 Turkish lira. Basically, you just divide by five. So that's a little more than $5 and less than five bucks for a hot dog, chips and cola, a uh, sandwich, chips, and a run, which is a Turkish yogurt drink, is four dollars. Gazleme, four dollars fifty cents. Meatball sandwich, five bucks, with chips and a Coke. So it was 50 Turkish lira, or two dollars and fifty cents, for a fresh orange pomegranate juice. Right up there is the ticket office for the open air museum, but let's get up on top of this hill and investigate. So this looks like a pretty big one, but I don't think it is the one that I'm looking for. Definitely not. So this was obviously quite a magnificent building when it was completed. It looks like it has fallen apart and filled in with dirt and boulders, but uh, look at this kind of grand, two grand uh, doorways. Unfortunately, having no luck finding that big old cave. I even watched the video again on my phone and just can't quite figure out where it is. It is close by. You can see the road in the uh, video once he steps out of the cave. But just having no luck. And there you go. That is the uh, ticket office.
So let's go ahead and go inside and show the incredible murals inside the fairy chimneys. So this is one of the churches. It is outside of the pay zone, so it is free. But it is locked. At least you can get a sense of the gorgeous murals. And so to the best of my recollection then, you might not be able to film inside of the churches and show the paintings inside the pay area. So at least I was able to give you a taste of it there. Let's go find out. The nunnery, people who chose to live a lonely life of seclusion, such as hermits, formed an important social group despite the fact that they had nothing to do with the churches and monasteries. These people did not even work to meet their basic needs. They received the basic necessities from the population and the monasteries who respected them. Daily worship in these small monasteries was taking place under the supervision of a member of the clergy. For the Christians who lived in these structures, the situation was unlike that of the groups in Egypt and Syria who enjoyed a more privileged life. Everything was shared, the sick were tended to, and there were no differences that would cause a rupture with the common people. The seven-story rock cone outcropping to the left of the museum entrance is known as the nunnery. Dining hall, kitchen, some rooms, ruined chapel, church on the third story, a dome with four columns. So unfortunately it looks like filming is not going to be allowed inside the churches, but here are some Photos of the most amazing ones and an explanation. Desis, whatever that is. Annunciation. Journey into Bethlehem. Nativity. Adoration of the Magi. Transfiguration. Entry into Jerusalem. Jesus riding a horse. Raising of Lazarus. Baptism. Flight into Egypt, Last Supper, Betrayal by Judas, Crucifixion, Saint Onufrius, Saint Thomas, Saint Basil, Saint Giorgio, Saint Theodore. So there is one of the churches. Unfortunately, can't film inside. It is not as spectacular as some of the other ones. And then from here, you can see across the canyon, tons more of the caves. And then these are all churches, including an absolutely magnificent one up there. So I can film inside of this one since there aren't any murals. Can't see too much, but uh, in the other room, then, looks like another dining hall with the bench and the table. And a local resident hanging out. Hey buddy. Larder, kitchen, refectory. These three areas lie side by side and are connected by passageways. The first section was used as a larder with recesses hollowed from the rock being used as storage spaces. In the kitchen, there is a tandir, a type of oven, still found in local village houses. The final section was the refectory, a long table carved from the rock extends from the left of the entrance. This would have seated 40 to 50 people. To the right of the table is a winery hollowed in the floor used for squashing grapes. And so, as I was saying, the uh, bench and table there, they have another one here somewhere, and I guess you can film inside of all of these. Uh -huh. 
So there is the table. It's an amazing one with a bench going all the way around it. Very cool. The dark church in the central dome has represented the Christ Pantocrator, and in the four small domes are the four archangels, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, and Azrael. It is called the dark church because it receives very little light from the window in the narthex, and for this reason, the colors of the paintings are still very bright. But I won't be able to film inside. Maybe I can at least show the facade up close. Yes, and uh, some of the murals on the side there. Another of the dining areas. Big, long table. So the dark church was amazing. It is kind of misnamed in a way because it is super colorful inside there. It is called the dark church because little light goes in there, but uh, there's enough to see. And it was just really incredible paintings of Jesus and from the Bible and everything. So, the first time that I was here in 2009, I managed to uh, film a video clip inside one of the churches, and so I will end this tour of the open air museum with that, and then get out of here and go see more of the surrounding area. So I decided to go for some quick and easy fast food so I can keep on exploring. Had a hot dog, fries, and I guess one onion ring, and an Iran Turkish yogurt drink.